Hey, how's it going? If you're watching this video, chances are you've uh, come across some problems where you're working with angles and rotation. Uh, a lot of different word problems usually try and mix these into the earlier part of trigonometry. And uh, just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, maybe we'll look at uh, one of my examples to get underway. So problems like this usually deal with some type of tire or rotation, and they're questions like how many degrees does it move through in X amount of time? So the trick to this is really looking at your units and making sure things match up so you can properly keep track of how much rotation you actually get out of something. So uh, what you'll see is a, a wonderful technique that you can keep track of your units uh, as we're going through the problem. So let's see what we have here and see how this works. So for this first problem, I have a wheel that is rotating 300 times per minute. And what I really want to figure out is how many degrees does just a point on the edge of that move in just one second. So if we can imagine, you know, we have some sort of tire, uh, it's rotating pretty fast if it gets around 300 times every minute. And then just here on the edge, I have this little point here that I want to keep track of. And I want to figure out how far does it move in just one second. Uh, as a follow-up to this, we'll also figure out how far it moves in one-fifth of a second. So maybe a, a little bit short of a, a distance. In a problem like this, you really want to identify what you're after. So for this one, we're after how many degrees does an individual point move in one second? So this is like what we want to see in our answer. We want to see how many degrees per second it's going to move. Since I know that information, I'm going to put this all the way at the right and say that I really want degrees per second uh, as my final answer. Then I'm going to go back through the problem and see what information I've been given uh, to try and build this. So it looks like I have that a wheel is rotating 300 times per minute. So let's go ahead and put that over on the left side. Right now we know it is currently spinning. Uh, I have 300 revolutions, REV, per one minute. Now what you can see is this information that I'm given, this 300 revolutions per minute, doesn't match up with what I want. I want degrees per second. So we're going to go through a conversion process to make sure we get the proper units in the end and to see how we need to multiply or divide these numbers. All right, so first we need to figure out how am I going to turn minutes into seconds? And the key is by multiplying by a fraction that involves minutes and seconds. In fact, we want to get rid of this minutes and just leave seconds. So let's create a little fraction that has minutes and seconds in it, one on top, one on the bottom. I'm specifically putting minutes on the top so it will get rid of this one, and you'll see that the seconds, they'll still survive. There's nothing over here to cancel it out, and it'll become the seconds on the right. So that's what we got. So let's see. How many seconds are in one minute? Well, there are 60 seconds in one minute. So there's one fraction that will help me through that conversion process. The next thing we need is we need to turn revolutions into degrees. So let's use another one of these. Uh, this time, let's put revolutions on the bottom and degrees on top. Now, I get my thought process of why, why this particular order is I want to get rid of revolutions. I want these guys to cancel out and only degrees to survive until the end. So revolutions on the bottom, degrees on top, looks good. So what's the connection here? How many degrees are in one revolution? Well, if I take my circle, I go around one revolution once around, I get 360 degrees. So 360 in one revolution. Now that I have my units uh, all squared away, uh, we can actually go through and see what will survive, what will not survive, and see what numbers we really need to multiply together. So here I'll have my minutes units. Those will cancel out since one's on the top, one's on the bottom. Revolutions will cancel. And the only units I'll be left with are degrees and seconds, which is sure enough what I want. Let's see what numbers are left over. We'll have 300 multiplied by 360 all over 60. I'm going to grab my calculator and do some uh, quick number crunching. But when I get done with this, this will give me my degrees per second. In other words, how many degrees is it really going through for every single second? Let's see, 300 times 360 divided by 60. So this number just reduces to 1,800 degrees 
every single second. All right, so that really just becomes the uh, first answer that I'm looking for in my example. Just keeping track of units, how far did it go through? Well, it went through 1,800 degrees. Now, how's it going to, or how far is it going to travel in just one fifth of a second, e even shorter amount of time? Well, if I know how far it travels in one second, I can take that value, divide it by five, and now I figure out how far it's traveled in just one fifth of a second. And of course, it's gonna be a lot smaller I'll just get 360 degrees. So that'll be my answer for the second one. So again, some key things you really wanna take out of this is really take a look at your units that you're looking for, you know, the answer to the problem, and look at what you're given so that you can go through that conversion process. We'll do this again, and then we'll get on to a kind of a tricky problem I've come across uh, that I think you'll like. So this one it has the same feel to it. It says, how many degrees will the Earth rotate in five minutes? So much like our uh, wheel example, you can imagine the Earth and it is rotating. And I wanna figure out, well, well, how far is it actually going to rotate you know, over the course of five minutes? Like before, I really wanna comb this thing over and say, well, what am I after? Well, it looks like we're looking for degrees in minutes. Let's go ahead and put that over here on the right side. I need degrees per minute. All right, now what information am I giving? It doesn't say how much it actually turns, um, you know, in one uh, hour or so. But if I think about the problem a little bit, I have a little bit of a clue how this is going to work. Since we're talking about the Earth, uh, we know that it will make one full rotation in about 24 hours. So I can say it makes one revolution over the course of 24 hours. So that's really what I'm given, and I wanna use that to try and build into degrees per minute. All right, like before, I need to start doing some conversions. I need to turn hours into minutes and revolutions into degrees. So we'll use a couple of fractions like we did last time, see how this works out. So first we need hours into minutes. So to get rid of hours, we'll put hours on top, minutes on the bottom. There are 60 minutes in one hour. Nice. All right, on to the second fraction. This will help us convert revolutions into degrees. So let's put the revolutions on the bottom, degrees on top. That will get those two guys to cancel out, looks good. I have 360 degrees in one revolution. All right, now let's see what cancels and what numbers survive so that we can finish our calculations. So these hours are gone, these revolutions are gone, and sure enough, I'm only left with degrees per minute. Okay, that's great. And let's see, what numbers do I have here? I have 360, that's the only number on top, degrees, all divided by 24 times 60 minutes. So again, I'll get my calculator out here and uh, quickly punch those in. So I get that it rotates one fourth of a degree every single minute that we're on Earth. Nice. Now, of course, uh, what we really wanna know is how far does it rotate in five minutes? And I have how much it rotates in one minute. So I can now take this and multiply it by five, or really multiply it by any time to figure out the total amount of uh, degrees we get. So let's just take it and multiply it by five. That way we get our final answer. Uh, so five fourths degrees, or I can say 1.25 degrees. Both of those will work out just fine. Now, an interesting thing that I've come across is when we want to kind of turn the problem on its head um, and when there's a little bit of an issue about describing angles. So let me show you what I'm talking about with this problem. This problem says, how long will it take in seconds for the Earth to rotate through an angle of five minutes? And that almost looks like the exact same problem that we had before, but it's not. And the key is in this part of the problem right here. Previously, we want to know how many degrees the, the Earth would rotate uh, through an amount of time, five minutes. 
But here, the five minutes given, that is not a time element. That's actually a, a degree. It's, it's a distance saying, oh, we're going to turn the Earth five minutes. And this would probably be a little bit of an easier problem if it said uh, 45 degrees or, or 30 degrees. But it's so small of a turn, they're using the units, minutes, to describe that turn. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, no problem, we can still do this one as well. We just have to be careful on how we approach it. Um, I'm going to borrow a little bit of information from the previous problem uh, to help us get started with this. In other words, we know already that the Earth will turn one degree, oh, I'm sorry, not one degree, one fourth degree every single minute. And this minute down here is a time uh, unit that will be important in just a bit. What I want to figure out is how many uh, minutes, degree minutes, it moves through over the course of a second. And the reason why I'm looking for this um, is because I can see you know, how long will it take in seconds, so that's why I got that guy there, uh, for the Earth to turn through an angle, so here's my minute angle. Um, just to make sure that we don't confuse these two units, because they are different, this one's time and this one's a distance, uh, I'm gonna put a little dash on this one kind of like what you would see for 23 degrees, 14 minutes, just to remind myself that that's, that's really a, a, an angle marking. So let's figure out if I know that it rotates one fourth degree every minute, how many minutes it goes through every second. All right, let's go through a conversion process. Uh, we need to convert minutes into seconds. So we need the seconds to survive, we need the minutes to go away, and there happen to be 60 seconds in one minute. So that fraction will work out nice. Now I need to convert degrees into minutes. So we'll put the degrees on the bottom, that will cancel out that guy, and we'll need our minutes to be on top. And of course we'll put our little dash mark there so we remember it's different from this one. So how many minutes are in one degree? Well, there are 60 minutes in one degree. All right, and now we can go through and cancel and see what survives. So these two units are the same, they are gone. Uh, degrees and degrees, those are gone. Uh, and look, we even have a couple of numbers that we can go ahead and cancel out. 60 and 60 are gone as well. Uh, so this will just turn into one fourth of a minute every single second. So again, this problem would probably be a little bit easier if this said degrees, but it's, it's even smaller than that. It's just using the minutes marking. So the way you really want to look at this is every second that goes by, we will go through one fourth of a minute. If we sat around for five seconds, then we'd get one complete minute. So we're getting like a, a rate over here. And if I simply take this rate, multiply it by a time, I'll get the total distance this thing has traveled through. So that's what we're going to use to get through the rest of this problem. Here I have the rate. It's going through at one fourth minute per every second. I have no idea how long I'll let this process go or how, what the time will be, but when it's done, I want it to go through a total rotation of five minutes. So all I really have to do is solve this thing for t, and then we'll get the total time for this thing. 20 seconds. All right. So this one was a little bit trickier. We had to start off with some information about the rotation of the Earth and convert it into minutes per second. But once we had this rate, then we could go ahead and figure out the time that it needed to run for it to move through a total distance of five minutes. And of course, be very careful for problems like this. Your clue is if it says an angle of five minutes rather than a time of five minutes. Two completely different problems, all right? If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.